All right, so one of the biggest uh, things I haven't talked about that are criticism this game, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but is the graphic design of this game. Um, it's been talked about a lot. Um, Larry Elmore, who did the the paintings for this game, right? So he did the, um, the little circle uh, areas here, the little villages and woods. And he also did the box art, you know, and a lot of the actual minis were based on his art. Um, Larry Elmore, he's really one of the most famous fantasy um, illustrators out there, um, especially when he was doing work for, um, for Dungeons and Dragons and a lot of the books, you know, and I kind of have really kind of grown up with his art. You know, if you were ever into Dungeons and Dragons, playing that role-playing game, um, his artwork was really one of the things that maybe, maybe sort of elevated role-playing games to where maybe if you owned a bookstore or something like that, you, you then saw that artwork and thought, oh, you know, I'm definitely going to sell those here. You know, they seem really legit, even though it's role-playing games, which beforehand you might have not thought that much about. So he might have actually elevated role-playing or role-playing games with his artwork alone, you know, up to a more status of being available to more people, maybe, um, in my opinion. Uh, other than that, um, he did a lot of work with uh, with book covers. So if you ever read, you know, Autumn uh, Dragons of Win uh, Dragons of Autumn Twilight and all this kind of series, I'll put some pictures up here. He illustrated all those, and his style to me is kind of like a, mm, a Celtic almost sort of maybe with some American Native almost kind of style thrown in. Mostly Celtic, I think but beautiful landscapes, and he has a, a style of artwork that is just extremely detailed. You see everything. He doesn't use a lot of the devices and, you know, different tricks of different artists that are more popular today, you know, or maybe things are blurred out in the background or, uh, and this is in, I'm speaking in general about his work, you know. Uh, he kind of, to me, is sort of like the evolution of the kid who's sitting in, um, in class doodling, you know, making doodling fantasy drawings, you know. Uh, they're kind of like that. His, his poses are, not always, but his poses a lot of times are just that, posed. They're not outrageous, you know. They're not overwrought and overdone. You know, a lot of more artists today are always picturing uh, fantasy uh, characters and, you know, these very dynamic poses Whereas when, when you look at Larry Elmore's stuff, it's more like you can kind of picture yourself in that world. You can picture yourself uh, becoming that character in particular. You know, a lot of the his drawings are actually posed. They look like the characters are posing for a picture, <laughs> if you look at any, some of these book covers. Um, and I like that. You know, I like his artwork. Maybe it's not as technically fantastic as some other artists, you know, especially more modern um, fantasy artists. But... But it's charming to me, and I, and I really love it, and I've kind of grown up with it. So seeing his artwork in a game like this, I just really love it. And to me, there's a direct and very noticeable fissure, a break between his artwork, which, which I absolutely love. I think it's great. And the graphic artwork of this game. <laughs> I think, really, as far as the graphic arts go, this game, and again, I don't want to beat a dead horse. I think something went wrong. I mean, something really, really went wrong. The the actual colors that they chose, the 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 fonts, I mean, almost every single part of it. And Larry Elmore, I think, I'm pretty sure he actually painted this map, too, of, of the game, which is which is also really terrible. So it, it's strange to me that that, that happened, where his artwork is, is usually so fantastic. But I will say this, um, no matter what happened with the graphic arts, I, I don't know what happened with the art direction, you know, maybe... <laughs> they sent it out and had to get it out the door too quick or <coughs> they didn't have their monitors fixed right to look at the proofs correctly or something. I don't know what happened, but they got some you know guy they hardly knew to do the graphic arts or maybe their niece or something like that. Who knows? But I will say this, that it doesn't impinge upon the game whatsoever for me. I mean, don't think of it like, oh, you know, the, the one thing I say all the time is I hate it. I cannot stand it. And it's a pet peeve of mine when the artwork supersedes the functionality of the game, you know, where, you know, in a lot of games, the, the pieces don't fit in the, in the particular spot they're supposed to go in or, you know, the artwork flows over onto a spot you're supposed to be able to see better or the artwork is too small or the cards are messed up, whatever. You know, I don't like that. 
So, but I am obviously, if you look at my, if you watch my videos, I'm really into illustration and artwork. But so I, you know, I just have to, you know, be honest here and I have to talk about the graphic arts and you know how something I think went, you know, horribly wrong here, but I'll just do a quick medley just to, just to show you and then I'll, and then I'll get back into it because I don't want to talk about it too much. Really terrible textures like the ones around the regions. This one looks like it was made in Microsoft Word. The Any General dye is the same color as the Varkalak dye. Should have been a different color like gray or brown or something like that. Different color from any of the other dice. The regions that are on the quest cards do not make any mention of where they are on the map and it is really, really hard to find stuff on the map. So what they should have done there is either point to a little map region of where it is or that they at least could have changed the name of the place like Dragon Teeth's range here could have been in the correct color font of the region. And if you say, well, they couldn't do that, it's actually done on this card right here. Pleasant Hill is a red location, for instance. Some of the bits don't really fit. Like this is the lifeline bit for the general right here. It's supposed to cover this on here, but it actually overlaps and it doesn't really fit. So that's why I use little markers like that instead. Much better. Also, these boxes with the numbers in them look like they were also made in Microsoft Word. This time, maybe Word 1997. Terrible font choices. Poor lighting. Really garish colors. Charlie's Angel silhouette in a pretty purple background. What? Terrible font choices. Awkward poses. What is she doing there? Is she, is she praying? She's a cleric, maybe she's praying. Toothbrush speckle paint doesn't really look like anything in a terrain map. Really bizarre design choices like this microscopically small red border around all the cards. Poorly illustrated map with really big expanses with not nearly enough detail in it, mixed with tiny places with way too much detail for the space. Really poor font choices, like where it says rewards there. That is really hard to see what that says. Anyway, it's just like poking a little bit of fun, fun at the uh, graphic design. But again, don't let it stand in your way of getting the game. It's a great game. It's really fun. I, if you want my opinion, I absolutely love this game. As I said, it's, it's great to play solo. It's great to play with a bunch of players, get a bunch of people who are into fantasy together, <clears throat> bring out this game. It's easy to learn. It's immediately fun right from the get go. And you're going to have a great time. I absolutely love Defenders of the Realm, yo.